Hey guys, welcome back to Hardcastle Homestead. It has been a minute since we have been able to connect, um, but it has been a fruitful minute since we have connected. The greenhouse is popping, and for those who do not know, we are based in Southwest Missouri. So our zone is uh, about 6B. Um, our estimated last frost date is usually around April 15th to April 20th. And um, so I am so excited to just kind of show you guys what's going on in the greenhouse and some of the stuff we planted out in the yard. Uh, that will have to wait for a fun visit, but I would like to show you guys what to do whenever there may be cool weather in the forecast and you've already planted stuff out. So I'm going to go ahead and flip you guys around so we can go on the cute little garden tour of the greenhouse. All right. And first up right here, look at this beauty of tomatoes. So jumping right on in here, we have got a bunch of Amish paste, the blue cream, pink brandy tomatoes, and they just looking gorgeous. There we go. How's that? Sorry, guys. In here, San Marzano's, German Johnson's over here, Napoli tomatoes, orange ox hearts. We've got moneymaker tomatoes. Um, we've got the Costaluto Genovese tomatoes as well in this next tray here. And then in the third and final tray, we have got some black cherry tomatoes, some Kellogg's tomatoes, and some mushroom baskets, as well as my Florette Salocias. We just planted those about a week and a half ago. They are looking amazing. And then moving right on to our florets, we've got dahlias right here. They are looking so healthy and beautiful. I am very impressed. I was a little bit nervous to grow dahlias, honestly, by seed, because I've only ever done tubers. But it's not as hard as I thought it was going to be. Mind you, I do have the safety of the greenhouse right now. Um, We've also got two of her, or three of her zinnias, the Alpenglow, the Golden Hour, and then the Precious Metals. Always make sure to just help build the strength of the stems of your plant by stimulating a little bit of trauma. It is a very windy day. We are safe, but we did have uh, tornado touchdowns a few miles from our home uh, on Monday night this week. It's Wednesday right now. Uh, luckily, all my friends and family in that area were safe. Um, going on into here, we've got our hillbilly tomatoes, our shishito peppers, and then we've, oh, I love shishito, so there's a lot of shishito peppers. Um, then we've got our Purple Beauties, which is a bell pepper. We've got some more purple... I'm mark marking purple bees because I'm like, I'm getting tired of writing all of this. So a lot of the bell peppers as well. Our eggplants are looking phenomenal. And then going right on down to the next tray. So we're... Or this is our sixth tray. We do love these Walmart tables. They fit four trays a table. Um, we've just got some basic common thyme. And then we've got some sweet marjoram. We've got the orange and yellow thyme from Baker Creek. I've never grown this before, but I only put it in three pods. And it's germination did really good. Um, we've got our summer savory for cooking and drying for herbs. It is also looking amazing. 
And then this back row here is St. John's wort. It is medicinal as well. I still have yet to move the asparagus into the ground. That is just from lack of time. Whew, that wind, man. And then on our seventh tray, we've got uh, the rest of our peppers pretty much. So we've got a lot of varieties of jalapenos like orange spice and pumpkin. Um, we've got mulatto Islio pepper. Um, we've got the sugar rush peach, which is delicious in salsas in my opinion. So I planted a lot of those. And then the new one to me this year is the ahi mango pepper here in the back. Um, I noticed a lot of chefs cooking with it though, so I want to try it. I found this random eggplant growing in one of the tomato trays, so I moved him over. He was uh, getting choked out with not having enough light. And then these last two over here, those are lavender. And then our marshmallow root. Our basils have exploded. So we've got lime and lemon, the genovese, um, the lettuce leaf, the blue spice, the emily. It all smells amazing. We've got black sesame, which did have a little bit of um, casualty to it. I, it just wasn't watered well enough. <laughs> That's on me. Uh, fenugreek, if you've never seen it, this is fenugreek. And then cumin. And then finally, we did have some holy basil pop up, so yay. I planted most of the spinach out, but I do still have some spinach here. I started planting out the globe gilly. Uh, we've also got Indian paint grass and amaranth, red spike amaranth. And then the aster, I did plant out the violet. Um, but I need to plant out the apricot. The lettuce is looking super wilty. Um, the tray needed water, even though the top totally looked like it was watered. So I added more water to the tray. Hopefully they'll recover. I need to also get the onions in the ground, but they are finally at a place where I'm confident that they're gonna be fine. And then over here we have our very first of this uh, purple series from Costco on dahlias. Uh, this one was the Le Baron purple dahlia. It's, and then we have a lavender perfection that has not popped up yet. You can see my daughter has been in here. Uh, we see a little baby starting to come on right there. And this one is the Thomas Edison purple dahlia. And this one hasn't popped quite yet, but it is also purple. It is the Lilac Time. We also have a new batch of irises called Miss Applegate. They're purple, if I remember right. We've got some pink canna starting to pop, which is great. Our elderberry is looking phenomenal. And then we've also got some roses here. And they are from the Bloomables, which I just really like that they had great reviews on their smell. So I've never grown this style of rose though, so I'm very excited about it. And just to uh, escape the loud greenhouse, come with me. Oh, I'm very impressed though. It made it through that horrible wind we had. Um, kind of going into it though, uh, all I do for my greenhouse is these clips and it's a metal frame greenhouse and I've had it for two or three years now. Uh, it came originally with that green meshy looking topper and I found after the first year because I didn't store it away in the summer, um, the green parts fell out. Um, so, here's where we are going into how I protect my plants in the evening. Um, so it really helps with the trellising system. Like here's all the lettuce in this one bed. 
but I clip with those same greenhouse clips bed sheets. Sorry. Um, and so in here actually, uh, a little bit damaged, but that's why I didn't plant all the spinach out. It does look like the bok choy did fine. The other lettuce did fine. I just pulled it off because I was tired last night and I didn't want to get any more clips out. Um, garlic is looking great. We have all the beds amended. I do need to get one more bag of garden straw for these beds over here and they'll feel a lot better. Um, we also got purple bok choy and poppies planted and then down in this bed I'm not gonna fully take it off because we do have more cold weather tonight so I'm trying to keep the bed sheets near but also letting them have some sunlight before they get covered up again for the night um, the poppies have all been planted out though for the most part. Still do have the tray. And I'm gonna do like little protege style, just pluck you here, pluck you there, and let it be beautiful. Uh, I'm not a utilitarian style gardener. Um, protege is a French kitchen term. Um, so you grow everything together in a very holistic way. Your herbs, your flowers, your vegetation, and Holistic is an approach that fits more with our goals and objectives as a family. So that's the best way to describe what we're aiming for. One thing I am working on though, going forward, is I wanna clean my pollinator bed out and basically dig everything up very soon, put it in pots, and since this originally was a covered patio, but the previous owner before us just had um, particle board up and it was not the best quality. We took that down. We want to actually put a doorway in right here where the wind chime is so I can walk straight on out to my greenhouse. You see how crazy that thing is moving? It's all being held there with just a bunch of center blocks and um, landscaping rock. And then when it gets really bad at night, I take those little steps I have in front of it right now and I put them right against the metal frame and the plastic to hold it there as well. That seems to be doing the trick. Um, but you can see it even out here, uh, those bed sheets are moving a lot. So, you've got to have a plan on windy days. You've got to have some sort of structure. Otherwise, all your work could be in vain. I'm gonna step inside here though. Um, welcome to my pantry. <laughs> Hi, Katie. Um, so in here is kind of the look of how we do the pantry right now. Uh, I have all my candy supplies on the top because it's not, kind of like permaculture, I look at things as zones. That's not of importance until one specific time of the year for a few months. So I put the things where I don't necessarily need a stepping stool here, you know, like baby snacks, because <laughs> I, I still do buy those. Um, my Costco broth, because I don't have animals to make my own broth yet. That's another eventual goal. All my canned stuff goes over here in this, that used to be a broom closet and my dad helped build shelves in it um, to turn it into better storage. Uh, also all of my dried goods that are contained in storage, um, like my organic Italian uh, noodles that I do, um, more child snacks with animal crackers, um, apple cider vinegars and other vinegars over here. It's also where I hang my dried herbs. So I've got, I'm just gonna close that guys. Um, this is how I store uh, 
the rings for my canning since I don't leave them on the jars after they're sealed. Um, that's just a thing of yarn. And we've got our bigs and then our littles are somewhere in there. I don't have a lot of the little or the regulars. Uh, lavender that I had dried. Uh, this is just my herbs, my dill, uh, my oregano, and then my echinacea. And I did hang drying for my method, especially with the echinacea, because one of the things that I've been learning when it comes to the dehydrating level is yes, dehydrators are very effective and I love my dehydrator. I, I do want a freeze dryer, but I do love my dehydrator from the point of view of thinking about it does continue shelf life, it does give nutrients, especially when you may be missing things and the winter seasons like I love to dehydrate out kale and then I'll blend it up and I'll add it to stews or I'll add it to smoothies and it's just a powdered kale at that point um, just adding some nutrients back in but one of the downsides to doing a dehydrator you lose a lot of nutritional value after a certain cook point depending on what you're dehydrating also wow my hair is all messed from being outside now. So sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, you, you do lose nutritional value that way, but also another thing that you think about with the pros and cons is not only does it dehydrate the water out of the product that you're dehydrating, so let's just continue to use kale for an example, but you also dehydrate out any of the healthier oils and whatnot that are inside them, which that may be what some people love. Uh, me personally, there's nutrients in that oil and I don't love doing it that way, but it's still better than not having kale at all, especially in the summer months too when it's too hot to grow it here. Um, but yeah, I guess the big thing is on just giving you guys an update is just like sprinkling in little, these are things my ADHD brain has learned over the years and I just want to take you guys along with me. So sometimes if it sounds like I ramble, insert breath here it's because uh my brain is just so excited and i just want to share so much of this information with you guys i want us to all be in a positive mindset while we're doing it and to just know that we can have fun together if you have any questions or you're wanting more specific things to talk about we can go along for that ride if we want to uh just continuing to move forward with my goal uh I think I have not posted for two weeks at this point, so that means this week I owe you two videos. So um, while this one was just doing a quick update of what's going on with our weather and where the greenhouse is and where getting ready to planting stuff out is, I'm also going to be going along for those in this area especially. Um, things you can plant that do not take a long period to germinate and be ready for transplants out. So uh, the next video will be more pertained around the plants you can be planting two to four weeks before your last, last frost date. And hopefully my goal is to get that out to you guys before Sunday this week. But I really appreciate you guys being able to come along with me and tolerate the windy greenhouse and just getting to see what's continuing to go on at the Hardcastle Homestead and seeing our storage and how we stack. Um, the goal though this year is I've got a bunch of little hooks I want to drill into the ceiling and I'd love to do flowers dehydrating all along the edges up here in our utility. Uh, it's not really a pantry, it's, it's, our, it's our laundry room that gets multiple purposes throughout the year, uh, our storage room, uh, but yeah. So that is the goal this year, is to bring you guys along for the transformation up here to make our household uh, just more effective in how we are using our space. So I can't wait, cannot wait to see you guys next. Just remember to go outside and get dirty, okay? Bye guys.